foundation for this episode is from two quotes. The first quote is from Thomas Sowell. The most basic question is not what is best, but who shall decide what is best? Identity politics say that the individual should not decide their own destiny, but that their fate should be controlled by those who claim to speak for their race, class, or gender. In other words, identity politics promotes a form of groupthink and undermines individual freedom. Thomas Sowell. And Pharrell said, very simply, while wow, politicians, it sounded like strippers to me. All right, so on this episode of the Broken Traditions podcast, we're going to discuss how the Democratic plantation is dead. Also, I, I want to discuss, and I want to be real transparent with people who found me for different reasons, right? You might have found me for videos talking about Joe Biden, videos speaking about Tiffany Hinyard, um, Brandon Johnson, a lot of different Democrats. I want to be transparent with you guys and let you guys know that I'm no longer going to do political content on broken traditions. And when I say I'm no longer speaking about politicians, what I mean is I'm not going to speak about a politician directly, but I will continue to do videos, thought provoking videos, such as the gift and the curse, like I did with Kamala Harris and Donald Trump, where I talk about their influence as opposed to them directly. I'm explaining why I'm not going to do it no more, but first let me explain why I started doing it, right? I started doing it because the political ideology when it comes to Black America was vote for Democrat no matter what, right? And I thought that to be a problem. I thought that been I thought that to be a real detrimental problem because when we just vote blindly for any political party, there was nothing to be earned from the politician, right? So the politician didn't have to earn our vote. All they had to do was just show up, be black and be Democrat or just be Democrat in some cases. And to me, it was real problematic when Joe Biden said to Charlemagne. But I tell you, if you have a problem figuring out whether you're for me or Trump and you ain't black. When he said that, it was the most disrespectful thing a politician said in modern history in my history of me being alive seeing the politician say something so blatant that was running for the seat in the white house and when he said that we voted for him almost at a 90 percent rate not only what he said was disrespectful we also proved him to be right that didn't sit well with me not gonna lie, that didn't sit well with me. So when I seen that, I said, all right, it's time to kind of pull back the curtain and show people how bad or how voting in this way is not a good look. And our vote has to be earned. So that was a Democratic plantation. I feel the Democratic plantation is now dead. I feel like it's dead. But the Democratic plantation, right? Democratic plantation is people who will vote for somebody off of symbolism. People who vote for somebody just because they were told they have to vote for somebody, right? I was on a Democratic plantation. I was told that voting Democrat is for black people. You know what I'm saying? That was my identity back when I started voting, that you just vote for Democrat. Don't think about it. Don't ask any questions. Just you see a D, you check off the chalk check mark and hit ddd all the way down the line i didn't ask any questions that was something i felt we need to break away from so when i say the democratic plantation those are the people i'm talking about when i say the democratic plantation i'm talking about the people who were okay with just symbolism that's why i talked about tiffany henyard tiffany henyard was not qualified for the position that she had you're not qualified baby. Right, that's so that's all good but tiffany henyard got what is it 87 percent of the votes because of what we wanted to see or that village excuse me wanted to see the first black female mayor in their village 
Now look what happened to their village. The village of Dalton is more than $3.5 million in the hole. Mayor Tiffany Henyard is accused of misusing money, and today she's nowhere to be found. Not only did she find the village of Dalton is in significant debt, but she also found the village's credit card spending is out of control. A packed community meeting Thursday night, outburst after outburst. Following special investigator Lori Lightfoot's limited examination of Dalton's finances, her report revealing as of May 31st, the village's general fund had a negative balance of $3.65 million. Card spending out of control. Receipts for credit card purchases are rarely provided. Lightfoot further uncovering spending that doesn't add up. The report shows $40,000 spent on Amazon purchases in one day money that's unaccounted for. Another question lingering here, money spent on police overtime with two officers racking up six figures in pure OT, $108,000 and $114,000. The deputy chief just fired here last week, Lewis Lacey, paid $96,000 in overtime. Now look what happened to the to where they live. Just because of the symbolism Go to Brandon Johnson, go to Eric Adams, how black people voted for these people because they're Democratic and because they're black. And look how, how many resources from their respectable cities is going to the migrants. And how these people saying they don't have our jobs and opportunities in these, in these areas. And look how the migrants is getting so many different things as far as housing, as far as uh, food, as far as job opportunities. They're getting so many different things in those neighborhoods where these black people who voted for you for all this time is not seeing not even a, a drop in the ocean of what they're getting. Deep emotional wounds coming to the surface. As black people who have been hurt continuously by the city and country it loves, it ain't our responsibility to take care of everybody else. And anger. We don't want to have to recall anybody. We don't want to have to protest anybody, but we are not going to be ignored, Brandon, Mayor Johnson. Many in Chicago's black community and the city council speaking out against spending $51 million to house migrants, asking when will the help for them finally become a reality. And it cannot be put on the backs of the residents of Chicago without showing them that they're getting something out of this. Mayor Brandon Johnson presiding over his second full city council meeting had to ask for calm more than once. With the sergeant of arms, please restore some order. Police also intervening at one point to allow the meeting to proceed. Ultimately, the measure passed with 34 votes. Many who voted to approve the money, like 49th Ward Alderwoman Maria Haddon, call this an immediate crisis that needs attention. But, she says, so do concerns of the city's black residents. Why are black people in Chicago and some communities so angry? Why, why is all this kind of anti-immigrant sentiment coming up? And I want to explain to folks, it's because if we cared as much about black people and had over the decades as we do about everyone else, we wouldn't be here. But the money from a 2021 budget surplus will only last one month. East South and West Side homeowners are angry. Protect the best in Chicago. They believe the city has overextended itself and should be putting the tens of millions of dollars earmarked for migrants into Chicago's most vulnerable neighborhoods. But the South Side has been under-resourced, underfunded for years, for decades. We have schools that need to be reopened. We have buildings that are abandoned that need to be business operated. We are taxpayers, we're property owners. Our money should go towards fixing our communities. The city has received more than 15,000 migrants since August 2022. We have no more room. Y'all are embarrassing Chicago as a whole. According to analysis by the ABC7 data team, there are more than 20 active migrant shelters across the city, seven located on the south and west sides. Whether it's one shelter or whether it's 10 shelters, we're saying the facilities that are there for us, the money needs to be put into those facilities for us. So symbolism, voting blindly, being disrespected. I felt like that was a problem. I felt like that was problematic. I felt like we needed to break away from that. I felt like we need to escape from that identity and 
realize, all right, clearly this is not the right direction to go into. This is not the right direction to go into because we see voting this way is not doing no good for us. And I'm not going to lie. When I say the Democratic plantation is dead, it warms my heart to see people getting called out for the nonsense. It warms my heart to see people getting called out such as um, Ricky Smiley, such as Plies, such as D.L. Hughley, such as um, even Steve Harvey for that matter. It warms my heart people saying like, y'all need to come with something. From recently, I just seen Plies say something such as, who are you to question a black woman? Just go out there and support her. <laughs> but to everybody who, especially the ones who, 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 who look like me, and the, the, the men who look like me, who quit the, ah, she, if she Kamala want my vote, she need to explain herself to me what she gonna do for the black people. Listen, stop asking a motherfucking black woman to explain herself to you. Oh, Charlemagne from the Breakfast Club called out Plies and said, no, you want this position, you have to earn this position. Plies is absolutely positively wrong. If people are asking questions, that's great. I don't even know why Plies is making this a black woman versus black man thing. This isn't about black men and black women. It's about elected officials and potential voters. The whole point of campaign season is for candidates to go out there and explain to the American people why they should be the one in charge of this country. Votes are earned, not given. And they are earned through you going out there and explaining yourself. Vice President Kamala Harris has to go out there and explain her agenda and why she's the person for the job. Former President Donald Trump has to go out there and explain his agenda and why he should be the person to get his job again, you know, or get the job again. I don't understand plies or any black person for that matter telling black people to just settle. Just accept whatever the candidate is giving you. Don't ask any questions. Yeah, but just vote. Doing it. They don't have to explain how long, anything to us. They've been doing no. it for a long time. Even with, with Biden, when, when we ask questions to Biden, well, it's the best of two evils. You know what I mean? You got to pick one. But no, if you have questions, people should be able to ask. Listen, that, that's the point of a politician, right? They're supposed to represent us, represent our district, represent our country. Shouldn't we ask? Forget. And, and by the way, they, they should be explaining without us asking. Mm -hmm. That's the whole point of them doing these press conferences and the meetings. Yeah. The same way these politicians have meetings for their donors and they have rallies right. and press conferences explaining themselves and their agendas to certain groups, they should have to explain themselves to black people the same way. Plies is a billion percent wrong. A lot of people are not going with that same rhetoric no more. Your rhetoric of just shut up and go out there and support these people is no longer the case. That was the plantation that we were on. That plantation is now dead. Now, if you go back to historical times, after slavery, there was times some there was some people who were slaves who no longer were slaves now felt as if they had to stay at the plantation because they had nowhere to go. They had nowhere to go, right? I'll say this. Those people have to wake up themselves. They have to escape their own identity. They have to realize what is just voting for something because of symbolism, just voting for something just because of, you know, this is what I was told to do without no real thought behind it. I remember Ricky Smiley had his rant or his moment. And he said, if Kamala Harris wins the presidency, Kamala Harris, <laughs> if Kamala Harris wins the presidency, she could be sworn in on Martin Luther King's birthday or Martin Luther King's day by Katanji Brown Jackson. The symbolism of that. Black well, hold people. up. Let, let, me, let me just tell you something right here that could be very historic. And Kay pointed this out to me. If Kamala Harris is elected, she would be sworn in. She could be sworn on in MLK by, day by the first black Supreme and Court. And possibly by Katanji Brown Jackson. Yeah. Does Stop that it. not give you chills? Come on Stop now. it. Does not does you, that not sin Maria just I, make I, your I can, whole body can, vibrate? Maria, oh I can gosh. go deep in the net. You got a member of Delta Sigma Theta Sorority Incorporated reading in a member of Alpha Kappa Alpha Sorority Incorporated into the damn White House. What's Come wrong on, with y'all? Oh, Come on, on man. MLK holiday. But y'all mad because she ain't talking about who, reparations. Who was a man, member who was a member of Alpha Phi Alpha Fraternity Incorporated? Come on now. Come on now. Game. Oh my God, Game that changer. just gave me chills. Mm. That gave Rocky. me chills. Game changer, Rocky. dog. Not 
Kamala Harris could be sworn in and she could become the president and do all these great things. He didn't talk about what she could do. He talked about how it could look for one day because of Martin Luther King Day, Katanji Brown Jackson and Kamala Harris all in the Divine Nine. What that got to do with me? What that got to do with the rest of the country? But that's the mindset of the people who want to keep people on the plantation. And when people leave the plantation, they look at you like you crazy, like, you want to go out there on your own? You want to think for yourself? You want to have, <laughs> you want to try to get your own food? You don't want to eat this, this slop or whatever, this, these, these uh, chitlins that master got here for us? Oh, you want to step out and do something different? Oh, no, nah, y'all got to stay here. We need symbolism. We need symbolism. We need just to keep doing the same thing over and over again. That's what the Democratic plantation was, right? And it's dead. It's dead. And my goal and reasoning for creating the content I was creating is to pull back the curtain to show people that there are all different options. It was also to show people that you could vote in a different direction. You don't have to support somebody blindly. You know what I'm saying? It, it does warm my heart to see people saying like, yo, I'm rocking with Trump. Not to say I'm a Trump supporter, but I'm saying it's good to see people using options. Political direction. I think it's time that blacks in, in, uh, in general need to boost our political IQ. Stop being blindly faithful to a one party system that doesn't work for us. So uh, I've always liked Donald Trump. You know, he was an icon for years in our community. What about the election? I'm going for Trump. I feel like every time they don't want somebody who is good for us to win, they throw somebody black in our face thinking that's going to like, make us vote for the black. I'm going for Trump. Kamala was on Biden team and I don't like Biden. Gas wasn't this high when Trump was our president. Food wasn't this high. I'm, going for I'm supporting Trump. Mm -hmm. Because? Because it has to change. Yeah. It has to change and now I vote more for what fits me better as a person um, rather than voting for the black person or voting for the first woman. I voted for Obama because he was black. I don't want to vote for her because she's the first black woman to run for president. It's good to see people like myself who are saying that I'm not voting for the lesser two evil. And they're like, oh, you're not going to vote. You have no voice. I have a voice because one, I'm not selecting something that I don't like. But two, I'm also selecting politicians around my local government, around my day to day, around what's going on in schools, what's going on in the roads, what's going on all over my county, all over the town. That's what I'm putting my energy and effort voting for. That's me. That's what I do. You know what I'm saying? I vote when I feel like a candidate is better at the job and they prove themselves they can be better at the job, not by seeing how somebody else is worse. That's how I vote. That's my, that's what my ancestors died for, for me to make that decision. And not my ancestors died for me to vote Democrat. I want to give you guys a reason why I am not doing political content no more. Um, I truly feel like the politicians are just at this point, super duper grifting, super duper saying things just to say things without giving um, no real context on, you know, their policies and what they're going to do. Right. There was a song from NDRD, right? That was Pharrell's band when he first came out. I think it was Pharrell, Chad. I think the other brother name was Brian. and. They had a song called Lap Dance where Pharrell was like the lead vocalist of the song. And <laughs> Pharrell says, Politicians sound like strippers to me. Or, polit or government sound like strippers to me. I use it for the cold opening for this episode because I, want to, I also want to talk about that. Right? Politicians or government sound like strippers to me. And what he meant by that is every time a stripper is in your ear, they're going to tell you exactly what you want to hear so you can go back in your, uh, your pocket and give them more cash. Politicians are going to say exactly what you want to hear so you could give them that vote. So <laughs> Kamala Harris said when she smoked weed, 
And she was in college. She used to listen to Tupac. So there are a lot of reasons why we need to legalize. Have you ever smoked? I have. Okay. Like and I and I inhale. I didn't. I did inhale. It was a long time ago. <laughs> but yeah. I know you have to go. They say you have to go. I just wanted to I ask. just broke news. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, was it in college? Or... Uh huh. See, see, I like stuff like that. That's a real <laughs> honest answer. <laughs> was it a blunt or joint? It was a joint. Hey. Yeah. Do you remember the high? <laughs> I do. Listen to because I know she has to go. So, what does Kamala Harris listen to? What were what, you listening to favorite? when you was high? Uh, <laughs> what was on? What song was? was oh it my goodness! Oh yeah, definitely Snoop. Uh huh. Uh, Tupac, Tupac for sure. For what you sure. To Unless this is some crazy strong weed that made you do time traveling, that was impossible because Kamala Harris graduated in 1986. Tupac's first song was same song with uh, being featured on a digital underground in 1991. So if she smoked weed and she did time traveling and while she was in the future, right, while she was, say, um, eight years in the future. Or matter of fact, yeah, I'll say 10 years because she graduated 86. So she probably smoking a little earlier. So was she time travel in the future to hear Tupac that's some good weed but if that weed wasn't that strong where she couldn't time travel that was impossible right so she just saying things to be grifting right she just saying things to be grifting same thing with uh, Donald Trump Donald Trump just now say like oh yeah you know he said he don't mind going to black barbershops and speaking to black people about the politics right that's cool but then he says oh <laughs> I would start getting my hair cut from black barbers because black barbers are better. People just want safety. They don't want much. He wants to run his barbershop. The people that were getting the haircut, I was thinking about maybe going there myself because that's, they, I like the work. Maybe they do, <laughs> they'd make my hair look better. I'd pay a lot of money for that haircut. They could make my hair look better. I would say it was a grift because he knows. I don't think Donald Trump is going to go to some black barber shop to get his hair cut. But black barbers, I, I would say, I think black barbers are better, right? I would say black barbers are better. Um, you know what I'm saying? I can't say that. I say collectively black barbers are better than white barbers, right? If it was a thing because black barbers could cut black and white, I think white barbers have a hard time cutting black. That's just my opinion. You know what I'm saying? I remember one of my time, um, one time somebody I know went to um, Supercuts. And that cut was not super. That, that was not the look. But a white person with a super cut, it's okay. But a black person with a super cut, it's not a good look. So I agree that perhaps black barbers are better, but I do not think Donald Trump is going to go to black barber shops. Same thing as Kamala Harris saying she listened to Tupac and smoked weeds. Too much grifting, right? Too much grifting that's going on in the political spaces where they don't, they just say things because that's what you want to hear. It's definitely out of control. And now it's to the point that I don't see a reason to even speak about that on this platform. We talk about break away from traditions. I don't need to speak about the grifting of Kamala Harris smoking weed, listening to Tupac, even though Tupac came out in 1991. I don't need to talk about Donald Trump saying that he's going to black barbershops to get um, the Travis Kelsey, right? I don't need to talk about that. And I said the Travis Kelsey because I know it's going to trigger some of y'all. Break away from toxic traditions. That's what this channel is about. And I felt like the Democratic plantation was a toxic tradition that we held on to. And let me let me say this too. The Democratic plantation is not somebody who votes a Democrat. Because you could be somebody who is aligned politically with a Democratic ideology, right? Say like the liberal ideology aligns with your life and that's who you want to vote for. That's cool. That's not a plantation mindset. The plantation mindset is the identity of we have to vote this way because we're black. That's the democratic plantation. So let me, I just want to be, be clear. Anybody who's voting Democrat because democratic liberal ideologies is aligned with your life, right? If that's aligned with your life, that's cool. You have a reason to go to that direction. And also you have a reason to go to the Republican conservative mindset because perhaps that is more in line with you. That's not a 
plantation mindset. That is a free thinking mindset. You think it freely and saying that this person or this party represents me. But the the plantation mindset is, you know, you know, you just better vote Democrat because you're black. That's the plantation mindset that we're no longer on. That's the plantation. That's the plantation mindset of plies crashing out in his car. Not saying he crashed in his car, but crashing out, making videos in his car about who are you to question a black woman. You know what I'm saying? That's that's the Democratic plantation. The Democratic plantation is uh, Ricky Smiley saying that. Do you see the symbolism that could happen if Ketanji Brown Jackson could swear in Kamala Harris on Martin Luther King Day? That is dumbass symbolism, <laughs> dumb symbolism that doesn't mean nothing for nobody. You know what I'm saying? It looks good. You know what I'm saying? It looks nice, but it don't mean nothing. And I'm, I'm, I want to say this too about the plantation. I feel like people are now pulling away from the quote unquote democratic plantation mindset. Um, for the democratic national convention, there was rumors that Beyonce was supposed to perform. I mean, from what I understand, and let me know if I'm wrong, there was even sneak uh, videos that was leaked of Beyonce rehearsing at the Democratic National Convention in Chicago. She didn't perform. Why would people say those rumors? Why would those videos of her perhaps rehearsing was being leaked, but she didn't perform? This is my opinion. I think she didn't perform because they see the writing on the wall. They see that everybody's no longer going for this political, let's go this one direction mindset. I think the writing is literally on the wall now. I think that's a good thing. I think the the writing's on the wall. We see that <laughs> we can't sustain this with our fan base. We can't sustain it no more. Same thing with recently Mark Zuckerberg coming out all of a sudden, um, coerced him to suppress content. I think they now seen the writing on the wall. You know, we we are powerful. The, the public people are powerful and we have to use our power to get what we want. We have to use our power to get what we want. And I think people realize our power, but like, oh, let me fall back. Let me not attach myself to certain things anymore. I could be wrong. You know, that's my opinion. But I think people starting to realize our power. People starting to realize our power. But yeah, I wanted to be transparent with you guys about I'm no longer doing political content. You know what I'm saying? You guys found me doing political content. I definitely greatly appreciate you guys. So I'm a transparent content creator, so I'm not trying to create content to run up, you know, views and clicks and downloads for episodes because something is trending. I want to have real thought provoking conversations. I want to plant seeds into minds of conversations to have. We can understand the mindset of breaking away from toxic traditions. So, I feel like the toxic tradition of the plant, democratic plantation is now dead. I don't see a reason to keep going on about this. You know what I'm saying? And my content to talk about the democratic plantation would not get into the minds yet of people or get into the, I guess, the, the algorithm of people or the minds of people, of people who want to stay on that mindset. The people who will listen to a deep the D.L. Hughley's and the Ricky Smiley's and the Plies, y'all are already into that mindset. Your tradition is to continue to keep that tradition going of voting for symbolism. That's your tradition. That's your tradition to vote for symbolism. Me, personally, I don't see it being beneficial, and I think a lot of people now is not seeing it being beneficial. And I'm glad that people went to that direction. I'm glad I had a part in that. I'll take on to having a part in that. That means a lot to me.
But I, now I feel like it's time to move forward because we now can see the difference between a, a rookie Somali applies and somebody who's a free thinker. We see the difference now. We see the substance in the, in the understanding of what's good. Let me know how you feel about this in the comments. Also, if you find, wherever you find Broken Traditions, please support the movement by following Broken Traditions. New episodes come out every Friday, 2 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. And like I said, I just want to be transparent with you guys. No longer doing political content. I think we broke away from the tradition. I think we broke away from it into a, a way of we're going to let Rome fall for the people that is staying within that tradition. We're going to let them fall. If we're going to break away and be free thinkers and have real conversations, a real dialect, not bullying people to do something because that's what we were doing all this time. That's what I mean by breaking away from toxic traditions. I right, man, I appreciate y'all. I right, man, until next time. Peace. Real Rap Ron is signing off. All right, later. Bye.